for our last session of the year, and we're going to talk about the topic that everybody loves this time of year, and that is taxes. Yes, I said it. It's the numbers. It's the part of the business that not everybody wants to consider. Um, so we talked about the importance of tracking your inventory and keeping track of your expenses. You also need to um, keep up with your profit and loss statements and run your numbers and understand what those numbers mean. Um, for instance, knowing that the cost of your goods sold is what it costs for you to order your books plus the shipping, you know, and, and to know and understand that, that the, the revenue that you bring in is all of the money that you bring into your sales, but it's not considered your profit. Your profit is what's after you deduct your expenses and the cost of your materials. Um, so I think in order for you to run an accurate business and to know and understand whether or not you are successful is understanding the math that goes into it. Um, I know that I set most of my stuff at a 40% profit margin. Um, if you don't know how to calculate that, you should probably visit the website or go out there and figure out how to calculate that. Um, to make sure that you're covering your expenses and that you actually do have at least, you know, a 40% profit um, whenever you are um, selling at shows or online or, or whatever you're doing and to understand how your expenses play into that. I see a lot of times when I go to events, I see a lot of vendors, and this just isn't authors, this is just vendors in general. Um, they will say they made table. Now, I think a lot of people look at making table as I sold enough to cover the cost of my booth. My question is, did you factor in the cost of the product for you to put at your table? So instead of your total sales using your total revenue versus what your booth costs, are you using the profit? Um, so you would have to basically minus whatever your product cost and whatever your profit would, that would apply towards your booth it, if you're looking at the break-even point or the making table point. Um, it also includes if you have any overnight stays. So if you have to pay for a hotel room, did you have to drive there? Did you account for your gasoline? Um, did you uh, have to eat while you were there? So did you have meals? Um, all of those things factor into whether or not you made table. And if you're just looking at the, the revenue that you're bringing in and not taking into account all of your expenses, you may miss the fact that that actual event may not be profitable for you. Um, so that's definitely something that you have to look at on the breaking even. Um, so for example, let me just read here, you know, so the event tables, $50, I sold four books at $10 a piece. So I broke even, right? Not necessarily. That's wrong. So that $50 I made, that is called the revenue, which is the money generated from the sales, but not including the expenses. Okay, so same event table, $50, sold five books, $10 each. Inventory cost to purchase the author copies of the, those five books was $5, um, including the cost of the tax and shipping to receive my inventory. So my profit is $5 per book. That means I haven't made the table. I'm still in the hole. Uh, $25 and need to sell five more books to reach my break-even point. Um, and again, you can see how putting a hotel room and food in there can make that more difficult. That's not saying that I don't think that you should do um, events that have higher table fee. Um, sometimes those work out really, really well. You're just going to be cautious of, I always ask for what the attendance was at the previous year. Um, to see whether or not there is the potential for sales. Um, sometimes, depending on if it's out of my market and I'm not familiar with it, I will ask for a marketing plan um, or an advertising plan for the event. If they don't have one, that should probably be a really big red flag for you. Um, I have 
done events where it seems like they collect the fees from the vendor, but they really didn't tell anybody about the events, so the vendors sold nothing. Um, but the event organizer, they got their money because, you know, they charged everybody the fee. Um, so you want to be really cautious of that. And, you know, I'm... <sighs> I will try an event and usually I'll try for a couple years because one year an event can be really off um, and the next year it can be better, but they have to be well organized. Um, I have a couple events that um, I'm actually thinking about cutting. One of the reasons is um, time and time again, we show up and, you know, the, we paid pretty decent money for a 10 by 10 space and we show up and it's like 8 by 10. Um, and so you got to figure that every square footage that you don't have in your booth is a potential loss in sales. So I have to evaluate and see how, you know, what is the profitability of that event? And to be completely honest after expenses, um, and my time spending Saturday and Sunday, I also have a full-time job. So that means I have no day off. You know, I can't do anything around the house. Um, no Lorcana league on Sunday, um, so is it worth it? Is, am I profitable enough at that event to warrant me coming back? And this is another reason why you want to make sure that you keep track of all your numbers so that you can make an informed decision on whether you keep an event or not. Um, of course, in the beginning, these events were all great because they were new events to me. Um, but as I became saturated in my market, you know, most of the people in my particular area, if they were going to buy my books, they probably have them by now. And so I have to make the decision on whether or not I keep the local events. I'll probably keep some of them. I probably won't keep all of them. Um, and then I'm going to have to expand outward from there. Um, but as I evaluate new events, you know, I am looking at the foot traffic. I am typically, I like to go to the event. Um, before I decide to commit to vending at the event, I want to talk to people who have maybe a similar booth style to what I have, um, just to determine whether or not, you know, typically they'll let you know, were there any problems with the organizers? Uh, was anything questionable? We actually had, um, we did an event where we did it one year and then we found out that the organizer of the event was basically a um hadn't been convicted but he was accused of being a sexual predator and so we decided we didn't want to support um that organization anymore and so we decided to pull out of that event for that reason so um there are other reasons it also wasn't a very profitable um event either but i think it's important that you measure and monitor your success monetarily speaking if you want to make writing a serious career. Um, if you're looking at your P&L and you're not happy with, you know, the profits that you're making, um, you can always look at your pricing. I know one of the number one ways that uh, you can increase your profit is to increase the cost of your books. So take another hard look at your, you know, your uh, margins. Uh, I pay close attention to my bundled margins. So each of my books individually are priced. And then usually I have some sort of a discount. You know, if you buy all three, um, that margin might be a little bit lower. I try not to go below 40 because it just, it gets, it's not even worth it at that point. And honestly, my work is worth that. So I hate to not charge it. Um, the other thing you can look at is decreasing expenses. You know, if your website is too costly, then maybe you need to look at uh, moving to a different platform or a different service. Um, you know, if you're looking at a ho overnight hotel stay, you know, maybe you're not staying at the event. Maybe you're staying next door at the Super 8, which isn't as luxurious, but, you know, you're saving a couple bucks here or there. Um, you definitely don't want to skimp on the things that you actually need. You know, you need to make sure that you have, you know, funds for an editor um, if you're going to go that route uh, or to pay for the software. Um, you know, is it going to cut into your marketing budget? You know, what are the ramifications of having less in your marketing budget? Um, so, 
you know, there's a lot of things that, that you can do. You just have to kind of shop around for your services and, you know, pinch pennies where you can whenever you're getting started. So um, it, it is a numbers game. It, it's money. So, you know, not everybody is is great at it. Uh, I seem to – I've worked in business for a long time. So um, I do regularly evaluate my um, – events and make decisions on whether they stay or whether they go based on profitability. Um, I might take a hiatus for one year and then I might come back. I don't know. But uh, I think it's important. And if you stay on top of it, whenever you do your taxes at the end of the year, it's really, really going to be um, easy instead of the um, hair pulling experience that of waiting to the end of the year. So I urge you at least keep up with it on a monthly or a quarterly basis, depending on your volume. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm happy, happy to answer.